Good morning, good evening, folks. It's morning here, about 7.30. Pretty uh, nice, beautiful mountain morning. Nice and brisk, about 60 degrees. Summertime. Figured I'd do a video on my summertime EDC, everyday carry, when I'm out running around with my dog. I go a little lighter than I do in the wintertime. Um, just different conditions. So, I'm going to get down to it and try and make this a quickie. I usually carry uh, some form of haversack pouch. I've had a video on this before. Things are always changing and all this stuff. And Sometimes I carry a backpack. I always have my belt pouch on me. I throw different things in. I got a lot of different crap I bring out with me. But this stuff here is basically my found you know the foundation of what I like to bring out sometimes a little more usually not less we'll get going on my belt pouch I always keep this on my side I had a video on this belt pouch I believe at some point last winter with that in the haversack I made it myself got Bonzo's Lucky Coon Tail, first piece of animal he brought out of the woods to me when he was just a little pup. I've always kept that, kind of like a good luck charm. A little bit of deer antler I've found along the river. It's a not a very big belt pouch, but um, I have a bigger one I made, and I haven't decided if I'm going to start using it or sell it. This thing works out. I can jam some stuff in here and I don't jam too much in here I always end up bringing more than I need to but let's get on it I got about a 15 20 yard hank of some number 36 bank line in there I have uh, DMT diamond shop sharpeners these are the pocket size I believe they're three inch I have a coarse side and a fine side. What I did is I super glued them together to keep them into one piece. And that is my sharpening system for when I'm out, keep my blades tuned up. Got a little extra backup knife in here that I had made. I had broken an old hickory butcher knife and decided to repurpose the tip of the blade. And this is rat tail tang goes all the way to the end. Just something, little tiny little fixed blade. I can put it, make it a neck knife, carry it on my neck. If for some odd reason I lost one of the many knives I carry out, I suppose I could get by using this. I know I could. It's not the best, but uh, it's better than nothing. Any knife you have out there in a situation is a good knife to have. So I have that. And I have it. There's a little sheath. I got everything rubber band right here. There's the sheath I made for it. Got it. A little bit of bank line wrapped around to put it around my neck if need be. And I have a little mini ferrocerium rod that I made. I had bought a bunch of the rods somewhere. It might have been eBay. And then. I made a bunch of little ferro rods for some friends and myself just to have in pockets and different places. That's probably my favorite way to get a fire going. So that's a little bit of elk antler on there. And then I also have a striker I'd gotten a long while ago. Came with a ferro rod I'd bought. And this is a pretty sweet striker. Works out good. So if I lose my belt knife, I still have a quick way to use the ferro rod without having to find broken glass or sharp rocks or things like that. Got two chunks of fat wood in there. Get a fire going. It's more than enough. Got some snail hooks. These are number eight. I have four of them in here. They are a little bit tinier hooks. 
you can see hopefully that's focusing and it's better to have a smaller hook if you're going to be throwing some in any of your kits in my opinion you can catch a bigger fish with a smaller hook you can't catch a small fish with a big hook so you got to think ahead a little bit so i got some snail hooks in my pack my belt pouch I have two nails, larger size. These end up are galvanized, but it doesn't matter what kind they are, really. This is just what I had. And you can use these for different applications. The main reason I put them in there is if I'm stuck out somewhere and I need to procure some food, I could implement these in a Spanish windless kill trap and hopefully get myself something. If I'm lucky just ways to get food what else we got um, I got some also for procuring food fish and snares um, uh, these are heavy duty heavy duty they're 45 pounds so you ain't gonna snag a deer with it but smaller game uh, these are wire leaders and I believe there's six of them in there. So I can set up six different uh, snares around wherever I'm stuck. Hopefully get some food that way. So I got two traps here and six here. That's eight traps. And hopefully I get lucky. It's not as easy as you think. What else we got? Got some little wicks for getting a fire going. Just some cotton, that'll take a spark real easy. And this little metal container is waterproof. And I have some of that little cotton soaked in Vaseline in there. That'll get a fire, you know, a little spark going and that'll burn a little bit longer if you need more time to get your fire started. So I got ways to get a fire going, ways to get food, ways to keep my blade nice and sharp, paracord. This isn't going to be a, I mean it's just good to have. If that's all I had, I'd be a lot happier than not having it. Try and get by. So that is my bell pouch I keep on my side at all times. All right, now let's get down to the haversack. Up towards the top, I have a half-ass first aid kit with some gauze pads, some tape, a couple band-aids, some uh, anti or some kind of neosporin ointment, and some alcohol prep pads. Nothing special, but if I cut myself, at least I have something to kind of clean it up with and hopefully stop the bleeding. I keep that on top of my haversack or my pack if I have a first aid kit in there. You want it to be easily accessible. Um, there's been a time or two where I cut myself pretty good and like a dumbass I had my first aid kit towards the bottom or in a kind of harder inaccessible spot in my pack and trying to use one hand to unzip and get down in there to get to the first aid um, you lose more blood that way. So think ahead, keep it very accessible. I just got a piece of like some half ass fat wood that uh, I could use this for some dry kindling. Go along with getting the fire going. Uh, right now, running around the river, I have a belt knife in my haversack. And I did the leather work. Did all the carving and tooling, hand stitched, handmade. Uh, I sell sheaths and different knives and things on my Instagram, which is King Mountain Craft at King Mountain Craft. K I N G M O U N T A I N C R A F T. And this was a Jeff Knight, Jeff Jeff White, sorry, knife blank that I bought. It doesn't have his emblem on it. His stamp because it was a blank K 
came to me as a blank. It wasn't built or put together, and I built the knife. Brass pins and cherry wood handle. All hand sanded and put together by hand, no power. And this is a sweet little blade to have. About a four inch, four and a quarter inch blade. That'll get me by in the summer. Train's always coming by when I'm making a video, isn't it? A little bit of food, a little bit of snacks. You can also use some of the stuff in here for bait. Got some trail mix, almond peanut butter biscuit, which is good, and a protein bar. Just to have a little something while I'm out there to munch on, or if I get stuck overnight, that'll keep my morale up, having a little something to nibble on while I'm out there. And this little plastic bag here, I have some more alcohol prep pads, I got some extra headphones, extra Bic lighter, a couple paper towels, and I got a little roll of some duct tape. This is Gorilla duct tape and that's always good to have for repairs, first aid, fire starter, multi-purpose. And having the stuff in these little plastic bags, it helps to uh, keep my stuff dry and also if I had to, I could take the stuff out of these bags and gather extra water to bring back to camp in them, uh, different things like that. Maybe use them to forage some stuff. But for the foraging part, see, I, right here I got everything on my shemag. I always have that summer or winter, spring or fall. Uh, summertime, it'll help you with camouflage. You could also could dip it in some cool water to cool yourself off if it's super hot out. You could turn this into a kind of sling and put some stuff in there, wrap it around your body and carry it so you got an extra kind of way to carry stuff if need be. Firewood, foraging mushrooms, all kinds of fun things. First aid, always trying to have a shemag. I have a 55 gallon drum liner. This is four mil. And it's big enough that I think in one of my yeah, uh, previous video I had made, um, I actually had to cut this open and get up underneath it. This is my shelter if I'm out. Uh, it ended up turning into a pretty heavy duty rainstorm for about an hour and I was stuck under this but I stayed fairly dry. So did my dog. So I was trying, even if it's just a bag, you know you got some kind of shelter if you need it. I have a single walled steel water bottle and this is a titanium cup and it works as a nesting cup. So this is like a tiny little system for holding water and purifying water. Also, I mean if I need to go find some different herbs or something, I need some kind of first aid, need to make some kind of tea or get some kind of sustenance. I can use this to uh, make some kind of medicinal tea with it if I'm out there and get some water purified. Also got two little, this is two pieces about six or eight foot of some bright neon orange paracord. I got more cordage and then this is a six to eight foot piece of some more heavy duty rope and never know what you're gonna need some rope for it's always good to have use this for all kinds of stuff last but not least in the main pouch I have two tiny little plastic bags if I end up being somewhere where there's people and Bonzo drops a deuce out there I like to be respectful of everybody else and clean it up. So it's good to have some way to pick up your dog shit. Don't leave it. So 
that's it for the main compartment. Well, I realized my memory card is now full, so it cut me off at the end of the main pouch in the haversack. Luckily, it cut off at a good spot to where I can keep going. Let's see here. So, um, my side compartments, and that'll be it. In my bigger side compartment, I have some bank line. And inside the bank line tube, I leave a large ferro rod with some duct tape wrapped around it. And that fits in there nicely, kind of conserves some space. I know where both of them are. Also, I have some fatwood shavings. And the reason I take this out is if I'm in a tough situation where I'm freezing cold, um, I'm injured kind of, it's a little bit harder, and I don't have the time to be scra scraping the, my chunk of fat wood with the spine and my knife to get some shavings, get a fire going, I can jump that step by just opening this up, dumping it out in my kindling, and uh, getting it sparked up with my lighter or my ferro rod or whatever I have. So this is solely in a situation where I'm in trouble and I need, if I can skip a step to get where I need to be and get warm, then I'll do it. So I keep that in there just in case. And we got in that side compartment, I do have two more half used Bic lighters. I have a bunch of them around. Never have enough Bic lighters or ways to start a fire. In my smaller compartment on the other side, I have a magnifying lens. If the conditions are right, I can get a fire going with solar ignition with this. Save some of my other fire starting implements. So that's low profile, it just slides in there, doesn't take up any space. Why not have it in there? And I got some windproof, waterproof matches. That's kind of end of the line. Uh, need to get a fire going, kind of emergency thing, as with the fatwood shavings. That's sealed up, and I'm not going to use that unless I absolutely had to, but it's good to know that I have them in there for me. And then I got my headlamp. I think this is 400 or 450 lumens, black diamond. This has the red, green, and blue light for night vision, save your night vision. Uh, also has a fairly bright white light. Um, it has strobe programmed in here. Also SOS. I can dim it, brighten it. And in my one plastic bag over here, I have an extra set of batteries for it. So if I get stuck out later and I want to be, I have this to help me get home. So that's it for my haversack pouch here um, I got my schmog here I don't know if I I had talked about that in the previous part of the video or not but that's great for first aid foraging collecting firewood I can wrap it up into a fanny pack style sling it over my back with extra stuff in it it's like having an extra pack uh, cool off in the summer warm up in the winter so I always always have a schmog with me and this one is kind of a foliage color, so if I'm trying to be discreet, um, that'll help me stay camouflaged out there. In my main, in my pockets, I don't have much right now. Let's see what I got. Got a dog whistle. Call Bonzo back if I need to without shouting, and it's pretty inconspicuous. He can hear it, but not everybody's going to pick up on it except for his ears, and he'll come back to me if I need him back to me. Have some hair ties. They could substitute for rubber bands for something, too. Or to tie my hair back. And I got a little piece of leather lace there. I've got... This is a Fenris Wolf Totem. And... I have this on me at all times, kind of like a good luck little totem charm kind of thing. I'll get a close-up on it. If we can get a close-up real quick. This is made of bronze. 
It is a replica of one that was dug up in a dig um, somewhere over in Europe. And there is a story of Fenris Wolf, which you all can go check out. It's from the Eddas, Norse mythology, Scandinavian times. It's a very cool story. Could be real, you never know. But um, this is a, a smaller exact to scale. Of what they found I got some leather tied up around his neck there kind of get him a little bigger I had it on a necklace but it's a little too heavy to be slapping around on your neck so I keep it in my pocket the scholars say that which they don't know shit they say that this uh, thing he's got that he's holding there is a ball that he was playing like basically they were trying to say that it's a ball that Fenris Wolf was playing with when he was a pup. Really, if you get into the story and the myth, um, he's supposed to get so big that at Ragnarok, he's supposed to be big enough to swallow the earth, and he uh, kills Erdin as well. I could tell you the whole story if you want in a little video sometime. I'd be happy to if anybody's interested. Maybe comment and let me know. Very cool Viking myth. But, um, so I don't think that's a ball that he's sitting there holding and playing with. I think that is supposed to represent the earth as he gets large enough to swallow it. But that's my little Fenris Wolf Teratum I keep. Always keep in my pocket. It's always there. All right. All right, last but not least, you know I love knives. So I got two more on me. In my pocket, I have a Spyderco Sage 5 Lightweight. I can't help it. What's that? One, two, three knives now I got on me. And I do that. I take them out every day. Different ones. I almost took an extra one out with me this morning. So that would have been five. I got a small neck knife fixed blade. Got my belt knife. Lightweight, sharp, very nice pocket knife. This thing is a little beast. It's also a little under three inches. So, or right around three inches. So, state permitting, wherever you are. It's just about legal to carry most places compared to some of my other knives. I like to always have something on me. So I have that. And then also, this is my main backup. That is a Spider Coast Shaman. Heavy use, heavy duty knife. And I bought the base model to be able to actually use it. They do more expensive sprint runs and I thought about buying one of them back when I was looking into getting one of these knives, but I would have wanted to just not use it and keep it pristine. This one, I don't feel as bad beating up. Uh, they're a little harder to get nowadays, but you can still find them on the internet. Uh, you know, aftermarket people that buy the sprint runs, they usually freaking. I don't know, they're way too expensive. You pay double of what you would when you bought them from the dealers. Um, I don't think that's right, but hey, if people are trying to get rich, whatever. But uh, this is the base model. I think now they're going for around 210 at the least. That's the cheapest you'll find them, it's about $210. Um, and, a lot, and it's hard to find them. They can't get them in quick enough without somebody buying them up. It's a popular knife. Um, if I lost my belt knife, I'd feel pretty confident I could get by with this. It's just a solid piece of steel, heavy duty, thick. It's a working knife, working blade. I keep that in a little sheath on my belt, which I will show you now, and then we're going to cut out of this video. Let's see if I can get down in there. I made this sheath it's kind of a little side carry 
stays on my belt, keeps my pockets freed up. And I do make those and sell them on my Instagram if anybody's interested in anything like that. It's King Mountain Craft at King Mountain Craft on Instagram. That's where I do most of my business and sales. So go check me out. But I hope you all enjoyed the video. It's a beautiful morning. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Like button. Subscribe if you hadn't. And share with your friends. I'm up over 72 followers now, which is awesome. Might even be more. If I get up to 100, I'm going to do a little giveaway. I never would have thought I'd have 100 people subscribe to me. So I really appreciate y'all that watch my videos and care a little bit. I hope y'all have a great day.